Hi, this is Jesse Liberty for Telerik. Today we're going to take a look at Auto Complete with the Rad Combo Box. Rad Combo Box is part of the Telerik Rad Controls for Silverlight and WPF Control Suite for .NET and XAML development. First, we're going to take a look at Auto Complete with simple strings in our combo box. Then we'll take a look at using the display member path to work with complex data types. And finally, we'll take a look at how we manage autocomplete when we have a custom display template. Let's open up Visual Studio and create a new application. And let's call this application radcombobox.autocomplete. Go ahead and click OK. Accept Silverlight 5, click OK. And in the Telerik configuration wizard, we're going to choose controls.input which will load controls input and its dependent references, in this case, controls. We can see that by coming over to the references. Let's open this up a bit so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. And here we see that Telerik Windows Controls and Telerik Windows Controls input have been added to the references. Let's come down to where our XAML is and add a combo box with some strings as its content. We see that the combo box simply has rad combo box items hard coded into it. Let's go ahead and set the height on this to 50 and now we're ready to run the application. We have a series of items in this combo box that we expect will be displayed. Let's open that up. And when our browser comes up, we can see the combo box, click on it. We can see the contents displayed. If we type a letter into the combo box, for example, I'll type D, it immediately jumps to the first entry that has a D in it, in this case, downtown Miami. I can look through and see that I also have a number of other cities, such as Florida City. If I type an F into the entry part of the combo box, it jumps directly to Florida City. So you can see that working with strings is very simple, straightforward. There's nothing you need to do. It comes out of the box working. What happens, however, if we have more complex data? Let's go back into our application and add a new class that we used in the previous video, which is the agency class. So we'll type agency and say OK, and then we'll use a code snippet to drop the agency class into this file. You can see that agency has three properties, name, phone, and zip, and those properties will be displayed in the combo box, depending on how we set up the combo box display. In order to generate some dummy data, however, we're going to need to add one more class as we did in the previous video. We'll call this Agency View Model. Once again, we'll use a code snippet to drop in what we need. And all we have here is an observable collection. Let's go ahead and add the using statement. And then a series of agencies are added, each with a name and a phone number and a zip code or a uh, postal code. Let's go back to the XAML. We're going to add a namespace which we will call example, and we will point that at this application itself. So we'll scroll down, find the application, and add that. When we have that in place, we're ready to create a resources section in our XAML file. This is very much what we did in yesterday's video on data binding. Inside the resources, we can use our example namespace to find the agency view model and we'll identify that with a key, which we will call data source. With that in place, we can now come down and add our control again, our combo box. However, this time in the combo box, we're going to have an additional attribute, and that is display member path. Now this is in lieu of using a data template, we're simply telling it to, d to display the name in the combo box and we're ready to run the application and when that comes up 
you'll note that the dropdown has all of the names that we took out of our data. If we type the first letter of one of the members, one of the names, we see that that immediately pops up in the edit portion of the combo box. So that's working just fine and essentially you get autocomplete for free again if you use this way of displaying the data. Let's go back to the XAML and add a custom template for displaying the data. And now we're going to have to change the way we handle the combo box. So let's drop in a new attribute, which is the text search dot text path. Using this data template, we need to tell it which of the fields it's going to use in order to display and to work with autocomplete. Let's set the width and height and then run the application. And now when we drop down, we have a more complex display, but we still are able to type the first letter of any of the entries and it jumps directly to that name. It also highlights that entry in the combo box. So you've seen that autocomplete is very simple to use, essentially straight out of the box for simple strings and when you are displaying fairly simple complex data and with one line you can use that with data templates at well as well